The Secret of the Sapelo Island Basket Weavers by Ivan Grovner and Doc Bill from the shores of Sierra Leone to the beautiful beaches of Sapelo Island, Georgia. It came with the rice, Carolina Gold. Ivan Grovner is one of the last basket weavers on Sapelo Island left. Carolina Gold and his nutritious dishes such as rice and peas, are still eaten on the island. Mr. Alan Green is a master who that brought the my, skill. That's my husband, that. uncle. And he was a real, real nice old man. He, if you could understand most of the stuff he said, because when you talk to him, you, he talked real geeky. And you have to really, really talk to him, really listen to him good for you to understand a lot of stuff he said. And I lived here around him for at least 12, 13 years before he passed away. And a lot of time I go there, I used to ask him at least two times, Mr. Green, what did you say, what did you say? And he'll tell you what, you know, if you listen to him good, you'll know what he's saying. Because it was real Southern Geechee. And he was a real famous basket maker. He had, he had a basket now at the um, Smithsonian Museum, and he was the famous basket maker for Sapphire. Okay, my name is Yvonne Jackson Grosvenor, and I'm originally from Bright Patch, that's um, on the mainland, and I married and moved to the island 29 years ago. I have two kids and married R.G. Grosvenor, which is, he's originally from Sapelo, and his family been here eight generations. And I learned, and I always loved the baskets, so I wanted to learn, always liked to learn how to do the baskets. So Mr. Green, he taught me how to do it, and I'm glad he did. So now we can keep passing the tradition on. Sweetgrass is abundant throughout Sapelo Island, unlike most of the barrier islands found in South Carolina. Purple grass is also used in basket making. Yvonne Grover can be seen here gathering these supplies effortlessly every day. The dried sweetgrass has a very nice smell. Among the large pine trees are numerous sawtooth palmettos, a vital ingredient. And a lot of times you want to get the green one in the middle because they're much better. They don't have all that brown stuff on them. This is a nail. You beat it flat. And this is your scissors. And this is a knife. And if you notice here, I had this knife here for the last 12 years. You can see how it did thing in the middle. And this is another knife, and those are old-timey knives. And if you notice, I don't ever sharpen those knives. You don't want the knife too sharp. Okay, what you want to do, you don't want to, you don't want to take your knife and do this. Hold the knife slanted and pull the palmetto. Because the palmetto have sharp edges. That's why it's called sawtooth palmetto. So just hold your knife and pull the palmetto. And you go back and do the next side. You want to get all the teeth off the end. Then flip it over. Just hold it nice and pull it. And a palmetto have a flat side and it goes around and around. First thing you do, cut the flat part off first. And just kind of pull it like you're doing sugar cane. And you go back. Get the next side. Pull your knife on down. And you don't want the knife too sharp because when you get ready to shave your palmetto, it can it'll cut it. Okay, you wanna throw this part away. This the the heart of the palmetto. You don't want that. Okay, so now you're going to have to shave it down so the palmetto will be real flexible. So slant your knife and pull. Oops, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Just slant your knife and pull the palmetto. And you just keep doing this because you're going to work by feel until they feel like they're flexible enough. See, now if you feel that end, it's real flexible. You can bend it without it breaking. Okay. 
And then, now, see like this end a little bit skinnier. You can just shave this down and make them all, try to keep them all about the same size. Okay, now if I wanted to keep this palmetto for the next three or four days, what I can do, either put it in a bag, put it in the refrigerator, or just roll it up and put it in a bucket of water. And you can keep it for the next three or four days or longer. Okay, now I'm getting ready to add another piece of palmetto onto that. Cut a point on each end. This is the beginning of a basket. Take your tool, whatever you're working with, stick it right up under where the last one ends. All I do is make a hole to open it up for you. Push that through. And pull it through. Okay, the last one you end with, you want to hide it up under that row of grass. And pull. The last one that, pull it tight. You can cut that off a little bit. And you're going to hide that piece up under here. And what you want to do now, go in between each stitches. So each one of those stitch. Now, now this begin to feel thin. You want to add some more grass. Get your grass. Make them all even. Split this in half. And push it in the middle of it. And keep working. This is what you call a small casserole, and where you come down with the little loops. And this is a design I started myself. And also, with the handle um, for this top here, I decided instead of putting a piece of palmetto across the top like how Mr. Green used to show us, I came up with this. And when I first learned to do a basket, like starting the basket off like this from the beginning, it took, it took, this is the hardest part on making a basket. And it took me the longest to learn to make it. So every time I used to finish one basket, I'd go to Mr. Green and ask him, can you start me another basket? Until he told all of us, we need to learn to start it, or otherwise he's going to charge us $5 for each one of these when he starts one. And that helped us learn to, make, to start, learn to start them. <laughs> Yvonne has made a variety of baskets, many of which can be purchased by visiting the Sapo Island Birdhouse website. A little bale that came from South Carolina. And you can see this is the center of the palm tree, which is, that's the wrapping. And also you can see they have a lot of pine needles because they have a shortage of grass. So they use a lot of pine needles. They use black needle rush. And also they use what you call purple Mueleberg grass, which is the other grass that I have. And if you notice too, this center of the palm tree, not as strong as these palmetto. The, pa the palmetto here are much stronger than this palm tree. Because I have repaired a bunch of baskets from different people who bought baskets from Tech Carolina. If you notice, see how it pops? And you can see some baskets. Well, Mr. Green had a basket that his grandfather made, and he's making baskets since 1918. And now his daughter still have those baskets. And they made, have these palmetto on them. They're much stronger. And you can see, see the different wrapping on the, on it. This is the palmetto. That is the palm. The book, The Secret of the Sapelo Island, Basket Weavers, can be purchased through the Sapelo Island Birdhouse website.